Okay, good morning, fifth graders. Today's lesson is gonna be on multiplying decimals. So please watch this video. There'll be some questions along the way and maybe some fun surprises. 3.2 meters. A small can of paint will cover about 20 square meters. Do you have enough paint to paint your wall? I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to talk about multiplying decimals. All right, so let's talk about that wall. Uh, it was 5.6 meters by 3.2 meters. So if you think, drawing a picture, you know, this is going to be about 5.6 meters by 3.2 meters. And we want to know if we're going to have enough paint. So what we need to find is the area. That's what we're covering with the paint. So to do that, we're just going to multiply, right? Length times width. Uh, so 5.6 times 3.2. 5.6 times 3.2. Now, if we were going to estimate this, that would be about 6. That would be about 3. 6 times 3 is about 18. So hopefully, if, if our estimation is somewhere accurate, uh, we should have enough. So let's see. Let's just multiply. 6 times 2 is 12. 10 plus 1 is 11. Carry the 0. Uh, 18. Another 1. 15 plus 1 is 16. 2, 9, 7, 1. Now, if you're thinking, well, where this is decimals, right? Where's my decimal point going to go? You think it should be close to 18? Decimal point goes there. 17.92, don't forget your units. It was meters times meters, so that becomes meters squared, which makes sense for area. So 17.92 meters squared. The small can of paint could cover 20 meters squared or 20 square meters, so do we have enough? And the answer is yes. Okay, so let's try another example. All right, here's example one, six times 3.91. Now, when you're dealing with decimals, it's always a good uh, idea to estimate. And the reason is because it can be very easy to put the decimal point in the wrong spot, which completely changes your answer. Uh, so if you estimate, that will help kind of catch those errors. So if we're going to estimate, this would be the 6 is OK. 3.91, we can just round up to 4. So we're thinking our product should be around 24. So let's see. Now, when you're multiplying with decimals, the trick is to treat it like the decimal isn't there. Set up the problem like you would a normal uh, multiplication problem. So what I'm saying is, don't think of this as 3.91. Imagine it's just 391 times six. Well, if it was that, you would put the 391 on top, multiply it by 6. That's how you would set it up, right? Um, and we can do that because order doesn't matter with multiplication because of the commutative property. So we can do that. Once you set it up like that, then go ahead and put the decimal point back in. Just don't forget that. And now we just multiply like normal. Um, that's going to be 6, 6 times 9 is 54, carry the 5, 6 times 3 is 18, plus 5 is 23. Now, this is the last step, and it's really important. Where does the decimal point go in our answer? And all you have to do is look at how many places you have after the decimal points in your problem. So here, we've got the 9 and the 1 two places after the decimal in 3.91, so that's two. Six doesn't have any, right? The decimal point, if we want it, would be here. There's nothing over there, so that's going to be zero. So in our answer, we need two decimal places. Okay. So one, two, 
and two. The decimal point goes there, and that is our product. That's our answer, 23.46. And let's check. Does that make sense with our estimate? Yeah, it's really, really close. So we know we're good. Okay, let's try another one, another example. All right, here's example number two. 1.35 times 100. Um, when you're multiplying by powers of 10, uh, like 100 is, it's 10 times 10, right? Uh, or 10 squared. There's a really nice shortcut that you can make. If you remember, our whole number system is base 10. It's based on powers of 10. So if you think, well, take it simpler. Well, what's 2 times 10? Well, that's just 20. 2 times 100. That's 200. 2 times 1,000. Well, that's 2,000. Okay. Um, that's very simple because it's just a whole number. All you do is add zeros at the end, right? You do the 1 times the 2 and then add however many zeros you have. Uh, but you can also think of it, well, if there was a decimal here, where would it be? Well, with whole numbers, we could put a decimal right after okay. and now from here to here what happened to the decimal it went from here over one and you just filled in a zero here it was times a hundred so we're moving it twice right it filled in those zeros here times a thousand you're moving the decimal point three times when you're multiplying by powers of 10 you're moving the decimal point to the right and you just got to think, well, how many powers of 10? 10, you're moving it once. Right? 10 is the same as 10 to the first power. 100 is 10 squared, so you're moving it twice. 1,000 is 10 cubed. You're moving it three times. You can also think, how many zeros are there? That's how many times you're moving it. So with that in mind, this problem becomes much, much easier. I'm multiplying by a power of 10. I'm going to move. All right, let's take a little break. I want to take a look at something. Um, a video that I recorded, or we recorded. I'm not sure which one of this is. Our wonderful Addy recorded this. I think it's this one right here. Let's check this out. All right, well, I hadn't really watched that video first, but uh, we saw a couple of bombs there, a couple of great catches. Uh, there's going to be some questions about that, or you probably already answered them. So um, that's the football. Come join us if you want, playing a little football during recess. All right, let's go back to our regularly, regularly scheduled program. To the right, because I'm multiplying, and there's two zeros, or I can think of that as 10 squared to the power of 2. So I'm going to move it once, twice. So that becomes 135. Okay. Very simple. Here's something to try on your own. All right, here's our last example. 3.1 times 0 0.05. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I said when you're multiplying with decimals, pretend... The decimal points aren't there and set up the problem like that. So I'm not going to think of this as 3.1. I'm going to think of it as 31 times 005. Um, now, there's a couple ways I could put the 31 on top or I could put the 005 on top. Um, 
me personally, I like to do whichever ones have the most digits. I like to put that on top. But it doesn't matter. You can do it either way you want. So I'm going to set this up as 0, 0, 005 times 31. Okay. Pretend the decimal points aren't there and set it up that way. Now that I've set it up, I'm going to put them back so I don't forget. I want to pause this guy for a second because I want to say that's not how I would do it. Because you see decimal 005 um, is a single digit really. Yes, it's a double digit, but it's really just a single number five that you're multiplying by. I would have actually put that one on the bottom and just made it th three decimal one times decimal zero five. That way you went to how to do magic zero, but let's see what he does. Decimal point is there, decimal point is there. Now, you'll notice these decimal points aren't lined up. And that is the main difference between adding and subtracting decimals where the decimal points have to be lined up and multiplying with decimals where they don't. Okay. That's the main thing to remember. So you should write that down. When you're multiplying with decimals, the decimal points do not have to be lined up. Okay. So that's how we're setting it up. And now I just multiply. 1 times 5 is 5. That's going to be 0, 0. Add a 0. 3 times 5 is 15, carry the 1, that's 0, plus 1 is 1, 0, add them up, I get 5, 5, 1, 0. Now, the last step is to count my decimal places. This here, 0 0.05, has 2, that has 1, add them together. My answer should have three decimal places. So one, two, three. My in, my decimal point goes right there. And that is my answer. Now, if I want to check, if I want to estimate, well, if I'm going to estimate, that would be round to three times, that's very close to zero. So three times zero is zero. Is my answer pretty close to zero? Yeah, it is. So that's the last example. Again, remember, when you're multiplying decimals, do not line them up. Sometimes they will line up just, you know, because they have the same decimal places, but they don't need to be. Okay, so that's the main difference. Here's some more to try on your own. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you like this video, please subscribe. All right, let's see what else we got here on this tablet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little game called Candy Crush. You guys could just watch me play Candy Crush because you know what? That would be exciting. Let's see if we can get this to work. It's loading. Looking for a candy crush here. Ooh, that was a good one. Tasty. Tasty. More tasty. Sugar Crush! Oh, sweet! I'm awesome. Okay, so let's keep going. Now we're going to have a little mini quiz, like a kind of a ticket out the door, if you will. Um, I don't know how to get out of this. I would really just rather go to full screen. So if you give me a minute, I'm trying to X out of all this. I don't know how to get out of this. Alright. I think...
Well, I guess since I don't know how to do it, I'll just keep going. All right, so this is obviously not a team meeting, but we're going to have three problems, which is going to be your, like, ticket out the door, your quiz at the end, okay? I want you to do these three problems. Um, I'm actually not going to show you the answers to these like I usually would. I'm just going to have the problems here, and these are the last three problems you have to do, okay? And then you can go to the next activity, which I will have scheduled, which is, that's right, Oregon Trail. All right, so here we go. First one is this one. Let's do four decimal six seven times a thousand. So that's going to be the first one you're going to do. Again, you're going to quiz it. Remember, you do not need to stack this. You just have to move the decimal. Okay. Second problem I would like you to do for your quiz is four. 46 and 3 tenths times 4 and 8 tenths. Okay, it's your second problem. And your third one, let's go with um, 0 0.08 or 8 hundredths times 42.6 or 40. Two and six tenths. So go ahead and do those three problems, or you're doing them. I'm not sure I'm going to do with that puzzle. And then uh, that's what I'll be actually checking besides your other work to see if you completed today's assignment. I think I'm actually going to use this as a quiz grade too. All right, guys. Great. Hope you have a great rest of the day. Peace.